Hello, my name is Josh Atkinson, and you have once again stumbled into my portrait painting YouTube channel, which is quickly ceasing to be an exclusively portrait painting YouTube channel. Last week we have Christmas ornaments, this week we have um, a Christmas present. It is my, well you know what, technically, oof, that glare, it's not varnished yet so there's uneven glossiness, but it is um, a Christmas gift for my mom. It is her pet cockatiel, so technically this is a portrait, it's a pet portrait, and um, it's also a portrait of my mother's foot with the bird on it. So, um, so anyway, without further ado, here's the time lapse. So here is the source image and time lapse time. You can see that there is a failed portrait of a very young Betty Davis underneath this painting. Um, that Betty Davis painting was intended to be a gift for my mom back like last Mother's Day, but I just, it just didn't come together. Sometimes, sometimes things fail and don't make it to YouTube. But so here we are. Now I had definitely never painted a cockatiel before. I've never painted a bird. Well, actually, no, I guess I did paint a hummingbird one time. Um, but this was like a significant challenge. I'm very much used to painting portraits, and so you need like uh, a, a body tone, like for the the skin in light. You need a body shadow for the skin in shadow, and you need some other tones. But for this cockatiel, um, I needed like a light and a dark gray. I needed a light and a dark yellow, and a, even the orange cheek um, little blush moment, I needed that to be um, a lighter and a darker orange. And then there was also the question of like the white, like the irregular uh, feather patterns. I've never really explored painting feathers and fur. Uh, that, that one humming, hummingbird I painted was it didn't actually teach me much about painting feathers because it was more like painting an iridescent still life image because their feathers are iridescent, which was instructive. But anyway, but so this, um, we've got a pretty good light source. Uh, you've got <laughs> on, on <laughs> such an odd thing to paint, but this is the cockatiel perched on my mother's socked foot um, held out in midair. And um, I snapped the picture and, and decided that it would be a fun Christmas present about two weeks before Christmas, and then spent the next two weeks struggling to to get it to work. But um, but the light is coming from you can see on on her sock that there's light coming from the right, and then there will be an ambient light determining, uh, well well I guess reflecting into the shadow tone which I haven't begun to deal with. And now I'm blocking in her leather chair, which is always covered in um, uh, crap. <laughs> it's covered in binders and folders and things. We jokingly call it her desk. Um, but uh, that was, like I said last week, about painting the reflections in Christmas ornaments. Sometimes you don't paint certain things because they're just not going to read clearly. So if you can edit for a landscape, you can edit for a still life or a bird portrait. Yeah. I should think, I, I've never thought about other, um, like, what artists in, in art history have painted a bird famously. I can't really, nothing's coming to mind. I don't know if Rembrandt had a cockatoo or anything. So now here we go. We're painting sort of, I made it lighter, her sock, um, because there isn't a whole lot of this is the shadow, like the shadow has a lot of light coming from the other side that is not as bright as the light coming from the right, which is also on the side of uh, the cockatiel now. But it all became super like confusing. This is where my not having like gone to art school and not having like formal training becomes, <laughs> it rears its head. Like, how do you know to, okay, so the bird is predominantly gray, so you've got the light gray, but that can't be the same as the white feathers that are on the shadow side of her form. It's just tricky. So, I mean, you'll see, I just kind of 
do my best. I, you know, squint my eyes to get rid of detail. I try to suggest feathers rather than, you know, if you've seen my other videos, you know that my style is, they say, painterly. I think that's kind of a dopey way to describe and anyone painting is painterly. But it just means that you're not trying to make it look like a photograph. So I'm suggesting the folds in the sock and her feathers. And um, her name is Bode, by the way. I don't know if I've said that in the uh, uh, intro, which I have not yet recorded. So I know I haven't said it, but I might repeat it anyway. Her name is Bode, which is how I apparently would have pronounced the word bird when I was four and I had a recessed R. So here we're painting. I've also never painted leather before, and I feel quite pleased with myself for getting it to work uh, in the in this chair. I've never painted a plaid um, blanket either, which is what that is. I'm really doing that very loosely, very suggested. Um, I just laid in like a deep kind of mauve or, or a light mauve color. Um, the actual object is white there, but it's in shadow. So, so that's what uh it, it, it i'm just it's another example like i said last week of like when you're painting white fabric or white anything you never just paint white so um now i'm painting floorboards and i'm experimenting with how to just how much can i just suggest them like there with um with just the brush strokes themselves i do futz with it a bit more um because it looks a little too, uh, I don't know, just, uh, it's distracting. It's becoming its own focal point somehow. And there I smear some yellow paint. Um, when you smear paint, it's not, it's not an emergency. You just paint over it or you scrape it off or you wait till it dries and you paint over it. Um, and now in the background, uh, there's, uh, the Taj Mahal, this cockatiel's birdcage, which I have had to lift more times than I and I would like to believe it is as tall as I am, and I'm six foot five. Okay, maybe it's just six feet, but it is a big, heavy cage intended for, I don't know, a, a leopard or, or, or a bear. It, it, it is not cockatiel-sized, but she lives a very lush life, Bode. And um, I do that suggestively. You can see I don't even... I'm not even trying to make the lines super straight. I just want it to be an indication because, again, you want the eye to be drawn to the focal point, which is the bird and the sock. They are in a relationship. Um, so the cage, the, the blanket on the chair, those are suggested. The light reflecting into the leather on the chair is very suggested. It's not super blended. The, uh, the sock has to be more um, resolved, as does the cockatiel. I will say at the end of this, I didn't record it because it takes a matter of seconds and there wouldn't really have been a point, but it was all much too cool toned for something lit by the sun, which is yellow. Um, so once it was dry enough, I just sort of scrubbed in a, um, a, a glaze of yellow ochre, mostly with a bit of cadmium orange, just to give it some more, you know, sun colored, more uh, brightness and warmth. And... Uh, yeah, there's her little crest, and I can't tell you that I'm an expert on painting birds at this point, but I'm less afraid, and I uh, encourage you to also be less afraid, because I didn't know what I was doing. It worked out, so there's no reason that that can't be the same for anybody else. I don't think I conveyed exactly how bad this bird is, though. Anyway, this is the finished painting. And it is most definitely not for sale because it belongs to my mom. So that is how I arrived at this um, painting of my mother's pet cockatiel, who I secretly love, even though she is the most ill-behaved pet we have ever had. And we've had like dozens. Um, she's a very bad bird, but that's what we love about her. Anyway, um... It's new to me painting birds, but hopefully it was helpful to you. Hopefully you got something out of it. Please do uh, leave comments and questions so that I have further uh, external guidance on what to talk about in these videos. And, um, and, and more important than anything, literally anything happening geopolitically, I need you to click that subscribe button.
It's a red subscribe button. I need you to click it. It would mean the world to me. All right, anyway, thank you for watching and clicking subscribe. And I uh, will see you next Monday with... It won't be a bird and it won't be Christmas ornaments. It, hopefully it will be a human portrait. But who knows? All right, thanks for watching. Bye.